from leading the NHL in penalty minutes. Bam! Oh, man. To owing $26 million in gambling debts. When he's obviously throwing games to win money. Evander Kane may have the most controversial and confusing NHL career of all time. Let's quickly start things off with his background and his early career. And trust me, it's not what you think. Evander Frank Kane was born August 2nd, 1991 in Vancouver. He was born to Perry and Sherry Kane, and they actually named him after American boxer Evander Holyfield. Kane comes from an insane athletic lineage, and we'll dive more into that shortly. Growing up in East Vancouver, Kane started to skate at age three and began playing minor hockey at age eight. In 2006, he was drafted 19th overall by the Vancouver Giants in the WHL Phantom Draft. Later that postseason, he tallied an assist, helping the Giants win the Memorial Cup Championship. He finished third in team scoring the following season, and the year after that, he started off with an insane 22-game point streak. In 17 postseason games, Kane accumulated 15 points, making him a primary contender for a top overall draft pick. Time to talk about his NHL career and achievements. In the 2009 NHL draft, Kane was selected fourth overall by the Atlanta Thrashers. Less than a month later, the Thrashers signed Kane to an entry-level contract worth $9,300,000. That October, he earned his first point in his NHL debut, and five days later, he scored his first goal. His sophomore season was riddled by injuries, but he did manage to increase all of his point totals. Big changes happened that offseason. The Thrashers were bought and relocated to Winnipeg, and this is where things really went downhill for Evander. It didn't take long for rumors to start that Kane wanted out of Winnipeg. The same week, Kane's business manager sought $500 from local restaurants for positive tweets on Kane's Twitter account causing unease in the close-knit city. Shortly after, a fan sign accusing Kane of not paying bills further strained his relationship with Jets fans. The Jets then instructed Kane to tone down his use of social media. Tensions with coach Claude Noel heightened a couple months later when Kane was benched during a game against the Boston Bruins. For me, I wasn't happy with the way he started the game. You're either going to play or not. Despite an up-and-down first season, Kane managed 30 goals and notched 57 points in 74 games. And even bigger changes happened the year after when the NHL went into the lockout. Kane joined Dinamo Minsk of the KHL, though he was released after just 12 games with the club's athletic director suggesting that Kane could not adapt to hockey in the KHL. Without the NHL, and with the KHL no longer an option, Kane posted his infamous money phone picture to Twitter. With the NHL lockout and thousands of people unemployed as a result, many thought this was not the best time to be showboating his wealth. Some disturbing news came out the following year, and we'll dive into that in just a minute. He was benched numerous times from 2013 to 2015 and continued to anger the organization with his social media presence, though his most notable benching came in his hometown of Vancouver. Kane was a healthy scratch because of an incident with his teammates where he wore a tracksuit for a meeting, a violation of team policy. In February of 2015, Kane was placed on injured reserve when it was revealed he'd been dealing with a shoulder injury for much of the season. Five days later, he was traded to Buffalo. He recovered for the following season, but the 2016 season started out in the worst way possible. Down on the aces, Kane, very slow at trying to get up, he can't. Yeah, that had to hurt. The hit resulted in three cracked ribs, which left him unable to play indefinitely. He returned to the ice after the new year, but was suspended by the team after missing practice. The night prior, he attended the NBA All-Star Game and told head coach Dan Bilesma that he would not be attending practice after drinking all night. Amid declining performance and approaching the end of his contract, Sabres management benched him ahead of the 2018 trade deadline. In February of 2018, the Sabres traded Kane to the San Jose Sharks. He had two assists in his Sharks debut, and that March, he scored his first hat trick. Out front for Kane! Scores! Evander Kane with his first career hat trick! The following year, Kane totaled 56 points while also leading the NHL in penalty minutes with 153, though the following season, 
didn't start off so well. Kane just took a swipe with the ref. During the preseason, Kane was suspended for the first three games of the regular season due to abusing officials. An attempted slash on Derek Engeland mostly caught the linesman. As the play continued, he pushed the same linesman. He forfeited $113,000 in salary for the interaction, though two games after returning from his suspension, something wild would happen. Kane became the first Sharks player in franchise history to record a first period hat trick. And a couple months later, he somehow one-upped himself. One-timers on, rebound, score! A hat trick for Evander Kane! Yeah, he scored three straight goals in just over 10 minutes of play. Kane repeated as league leader in penalty minutes with 122 while registering 26 goals and 47 points. The following season, once again, started off with some controversy. Kane was suspended by the NHL for the opening 21 games after submitting a fake vaccination card. He forfeited 1,435,000 in game checks for the 21 games that he missed. Following the completion of Kane's suspension, the Sharks placed him on waivers, and he was reassigned to the AHL for the first time in his career. While playing in the AHL, he again broke protocols by traveling home to Vancouver. The Sharks responded by terminating his contract via email. That the Sharks had terminated Yeah, I just saw an email in my inbox. So it was, uh, it was strange. During this time, Edmonton was one piece away from being a true championship contender. With Kane now being a free agent, Connor McDavid pushed the Oilers to sign him to a one-year deal. He made his debut two days later and scored the game's opening goal. Shark shot score off the post and in. And that might have been tipped home by the newest Edmonton Oiler, Evander Kane. Evander's game improved drastically, playing primarily on the team's top line with McDavid and Yessi Poyuyarvi. And that postseason, he went on an absolute tear. He recorded his first ever playoff hat trick in the first round matchup against the Kings. And there's a goal by Evander Kane. Hat trick. And remember that hat trick he scored in 10 minutes? Well, he one upped himself yet again. He recorded his second playoff hat trick, this time a natural one, in just six minutes. Patrick up this key again. Evander Kane scores! Patrick goal, his second hat trick. Kane proved to be what the Oilers were missing, though they were later swept by the Avalanche in the Western Conference Finals. He notched 13 points in the first 14 games to start the following season, but then an extremely strange occurrence happened in a game against the Lightning. Kane went down awkwardly on that left elbow. He's cutting the wrist, I think. A little bit of panic there. Evander Kane right down the tunnel. Kane underwent emergency surgery after his wrist was cut open by the skate of Patrick Maroon. They're doing like surgery without any sedation or medication. The Oilers didn't start off the 2023 season so great, but they had one of the quickest turnarounds in NHL history. And Kane was at the forefront of that reversal. In November, he notched his seventh career hat trick, and the Oilers later went on an historic 16-game win streak. Let's take a look at his recent contracts and brand deals. Kane has signed several major contracts since his rookie deal. Despite the up-and-down first season in Winnipeg, the Jets signed Kane to a six-year deal worth $31.5 million. After Kane was dealt to San Jose, the Sharks and Kane wanted to create a long-lasting relationship. So they signed him to a seven-year deal worth $49 million. Because he violated the league's COVID protocol, they terminated his contract. This cost him just under $23 million in lost salary. Shortly after San Jose terminated Kane's contract, he signed a one-year deal with the Oilers. The one-year contract was worth $1,375,000. After an impressive postseason, the Oilers wanted to keep Kane around for a while. They subsequently signed him to a four-year extension worth $20.5 million. But contracts aren't the only way he makes money. He also launched his own fashion brand, Defy. Now that we know how much he makes, how does he spend his cash? Evander Kane has arguably the best car collection in the NHL. After heading to Buffalo, he went out and bought this Ferrari 458 Italia, which came with a hefty price tag of 
$1,000. He also has a Maserati for Kale, which costs $120,000. And after signing his latest deal in Edmonton, he went out and got this Maserati MC20. The luxury Italian supercar set him back $250,000. And just wait until you see his houses. Back in 2015, he had a couple homes, including this Las Vegas penthouse, where he used piles of cash as paperweights. After being dealt to San Jose, he went out and bought this home for $3 million. And after signing his $20 million Oilers contract, he hit Rodeo for a shopping spree. The report suggests he's been known to call paparazzi on himself. But one thing he doesn't spend on are parking tickets. While living in Winnipeg, he refused to pay his citations and later received a court order to pay the $650 in fines. The Winnipeg Jets eventually paid the fines for him, and then Evander worked with the franchise to pay them back. Peeking now into his personal life, Evander married Anna back in 2018, and together they have one daughter. The tumultuous marriage between the two ended in divorce. The pair split in 2020, and Anna filed for divorce in July 2021. Some major controversy surrounded them, and we'll dive into that in just a second. During their divorce, he began dating model Mara Tigan, and they have two kids together. We mentioned before that Evander comes from an insane family of athletes, but it's wilder than you think. His father was an amateur boxer and hockey player, while Kane's mother was a college volleyball player. His cousin, Dwayne Provo, played in the Canadian Football League for seven years and spent one season with the New England Patriots. Another cousin, Kirk Johnson, boxed for Canada at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Barcelona and later fought John Ruiz for the 2002 World Boxing Association heavyweight title. Kane later took up boxing himself. Off the rink, he also enjoys golfing. He also enjoys the spotlight and even sat down with ESPN to take a couple photos. And all those tattoos? Yeah, they're tributes to his hometown of Vancouver. Now for some moments that caused some waves in Kane's career. And buckle up, because there's quite a few. In 2014, Kane was sued over an alleged assault in Vancouver in the summer of 2013. Vancouver resident Lev Makivsky says he was returning home from work when he was assaulted by Kane. Kane admitted he did throw three punches, but only in self-defense. Vancouver police investigated the incident and declined to charge Kane. In 2016, Kane was arrested by Buffalo police and faced assault and harassment charges. A lawsuit accused him of attacking a woman in his hotel room, though the charges were dismissed. Three months later, Kane was charged with four counts of non-criminal harassment and one count of criminal trespass. According to sworn testaments and video surveillance, Kane grabbed two women's necks pulled another woman's hair, and fought with a bouncer at Buffalo Club Bottoms Up. The charges were later adjourned and dismissed. In 2019, the Cosmopolitan, a Las Vegas casino, filed a lawsuit against Kane over an unpaid gambling debt. The Cosmopolitan stated that Kane was given $500,000 worth in gambling markers while he was visiting during the Sharks playoff series against the Vegas Golden Knights. A little over a year later, Kane filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in California with $26.8 million in debt. I always have cash on me at all times. It's what makes the world go round. <laughs> but shortly after, things got a little weird. His estranged wife accused him of betting on NHL games and racking up gambling debt to the point that their house was seized. She made a series of posts on her Instagram story alleging Kane even bet on his own games. She even called out Commissioner Gary Bettman. In response, the NHL immediately conducted an investigation into the allegations. They eventually cleared him of the charge. Later that year, the same ex-wife accused him of sexual assault and domestic battery. The NHL investigated the claims against Kane and announced that the allegations could not be substantiated. Evander got a restraining order against Anna and even had her kicked out of one of his games. I knew he was going to do something. He was so mad. Now, Evander has also faced some on-ice controversies. Back in 2014, he was suspended two games for boarding Clayton Stoner. He was also hit with a $5,000 fine. 
In 2018, Kane received a one-game suspension for cross-checking Golden Knights forward pierre Edouard Belmar during Game 1 of the Western Conference Semifinals. After elbowing Radko Gudis in 2019, he was once again hit with a $5,000 fine. In 2020, Kane was suspended for three games for this elbow against Neil Pionk. He forfeited $113,000 in salary. And after kneeing Sean Dursey in 2022, he would once again be fined $5,000. In Game 3 of the 2022 Western Conference Final against the Colorado Avalanche, Kane cross-checked Avalanche center Nazem Kadri into the boards, receiving a five-minute major penalty. He was suspended for the following Game 4. In total, Kane has paid $1,755,000 in fines. Now at this point, you must be getting excited about his earnings. Now while Kane has made more than the average NHL player during his career, he's certainly lost more than any player as well. Having said that, his total career earnings to date are $67,843,000. And he has amassed a total net worth of negative $26.8 million. Thanks for watching.